Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. And in today's video, we are gonna do another sculpt over. Mm -hmm. This one, this model is provided to us by Enrique Dusk90 from our Discord. Mm -hmm. um, we saw this in here and uh, he asked for some help and we thought it'd be cool to do a more expression focused uh, video today. The other videos we've done sculpt over has been more body focused. So we wanted to look at the expression because that's you know the main focus of, of the sculpt that he's doing. Uh, the common theme with all of these sculptors is that they're pretty good models. They're not like, they're not completely beginner level. It's just that uh, th there is something which is, is almost like fundamentally wrong at, in certain parts of it, mm. like in the expression here, but overall it's pretty decent. So uh, we're just going to be looking at a couple of things here now. First one is here that um, the teeth are bent. They're actually bent. So we just got to straighten those up. Yeah, you wouldn't have, like, if you look at something, if you look at a skull already there, that already looks a lot more yeah. natural. Um, when you look at a skull, the teeth don't actually, they, they sort of, you know, they, they conform to the skull like this, but they don't actually bend down or anything. Yeah. So that gives the, the whole mouth a little bit of a weird feel to it. So you just got to look out for that. I think it helps it sit better in the face because already there you can sort of see yeah. this like protruding, I don't know, I'm making facial expressions, which <laughs> is very hard for you to imagine, I guess, but um, you have that sort of, mm, kind of like with dogs as well, like dogs when they when they growl, you have the, the, the front of the teeth that really stick out a lot mm. and they're really protruding out. So if you want to feel, make it feel really aggressive, you can you can just really push the, the teeth and gums out of the face. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Like it's almost like they're sticking out at like a 45 degree angle or something like that. Yeah. This makes it feel really, mo really monstrous. Should note here that I uh, also have a mirror uh, mm. next to me, just so I can see what I'm doing. It's really helpful when you're doing any sort of expression that <laughs> you have a mirror, because yeah. it's like, it just helps you to, you know, you can, it's, it's, it's easier to find reference on your own face than it is to maybe find that specific thing you're looking for in, a, in, a, in an expression. Yeah, and also if you Google like scary face or screaming man, you yeah. get these like generic stock photos, which they're we're looking at someone on a right monitor now. They're they're all right. There's their starting point, mm. but you don't get the fidelity as you do, because you know you you can change it up, you can really just like play around with your own expression. So one interesting thing that I'm noticing here is like you have the the bottom teeth. So the bottom teeth they usually sit. So when you open your mouth, um Go away. <laughs> uh, you'll have probably an angle like this. Mm. So, so that's correct. Like you, you wouldn't have your mouth open down like this. It'll always go back at an angle. Um, the problem here is the uh, fantasy teeth, <laughs> mm. which is fine, you know, fantasy teeth. But in order for that to make sense, the the lower part of the teeth or the, the bottom teeth always sit beneath the the top mm. teeth. They always re they're recessed more. Um, so to to fix that, you either have to give them like an underbite or you would have to tweak these like fang tusks, whatever they are, so that they would like they would go out on the outside when he closes his yeah. mouth. So you can see here, I would actually have to push them out quite a bit yeah. for this to make sense. Also, um, if you were to look at some, uh, if you were to base this on humans, which you might do, that might be a good idea. Yeah. It wouldn't actually be these, these two teeth, which would be uh, no. longer, <laughs> it would be the one slightly to the right of them. Yes. So, so one out. In here. Yeah, exactly. I just did that by touching my own teeth, be like, I count it <laughs> out. <laughs> so we'll leave sort of those for now and sort of, let's pretend that they were fine. Yeah. <laughs> Ish. It's because it's not like, you don't want to do like a full anatomy lesson on, on doing all of this. No, but there are a few things that are important. We have some time constraints here. Yeah. So also with the way that the if you look at the teeth, so look at the before, like you don't have this overarched sort of like it's not a round circular thing. It actually mm. sort of, it's sort of more round at the front, and then you'll have it sort of be more straight in here because that means that we can have it sit in the face a little better. So I've actually narrowed this in quite a lot yeah. from the original sculpt now. It's a bit like a horseshoe, really. Yeah. Also looking at the top teeth now, they have even spacing and even even or just in the same size for all of them as well. You want to you want to generally avoid that. And one thing here that we were just talking about before, which actually helps a lot with the realism, is making this sort of cavity in here. You can mm. see if you look at the shape here, 
where everything gets pushed out. Kind of looks like he's got like I don't know, balloon mouth that's yeah. filled with water. But in reality, you know, you would have your psychomatic and your what's it called? Jaw mandible. <laughs> your, your mandibles, yeah. So that would like yes, there are muscles in here that would be pulling, but because we have I don't know, like bone, let's say bone takes priority mm. over muscle. Um, they would create tension between these two places, and this part here would kind of collapse in a little bit. Yeah, I, just, I think it's really important to actually consider the skeleton. I mean, this is what we're all about from Sculpt, and we keep talking about this all the time. Don't progress until you've got the skeleton nailed down, because particularly when you're doing facial expressions, it's not just a potato you're carving something into. If you work, you need to work from the inside out, where you actually have a skeleton, yeah. and then you have flesh on top of it. If you have like, if you, it's kind of like having, um, uh, like having like cellophane, like uh, this is like a plastic wrapper around around like something else. Uh, it will just conform to it. Yeah. So one thing I want to do is also beef up his jaw a little mm. bit because it's actually it was actually quite. Uh, small, like there wasn't a lot of thickness to it. And you would both have, you know, skin, muscle, all that stuff here, but especially if you have a powerful character like this, you would probably want to emphasize the mandible a yeah. lot. Um, and also see this, we, we want to avoid the sort of pear shape going out yeah. here. That looks, that makes it look a little unnatural. Also got to think like this character here, he would be like some kind of ogre. He is actually, he actually reminds me a bit of like a Hulk. Something like that. Yeah. He and um, he, based on his teeth, he would crush things. Yeah. That would be how he would get his food. In order to do that, you just need really, really thick jaw muscles. You you couldn't really like like this guy here. He would crush bones. Yeah. Uh, he would he would like kill an ant. Uh, he would kill a deer and like eat the antler to get the extra protein <laughs> and whatnot. So um, you just really got to make sure that he he's beefed up for that. He's a badass. And regardless of you going for realism or for more something more stylized, so this guy here might be like something in between. Yeah, uh, it's still these things are still true. These are just general design things. Even if you're doing something stylized, you still want to base it off of real world reference, like like yourself, like a mirror. Okay, now we gotta try to sort of like keep with the design and yeah. see if we can get that nasal labial fold in there. Actually, all the references that we're looking at. You know, it's not like we have all the answers magically and no. we just know how to do this. It's like it's just a lot of reference. <laughs> yeah. And the nasal labial fold um, is, is very prominent in sort of all the references that we found. Yeah. Um, including ourselves. Including ourselves, yeah. So we want to beef that up because that can really add a lot to it. So. Yeah, like this is, a, this is a fold which pretty much everyone would have. And it's just like the it's just like the, the wrinkle around the mouth, essentially. And one thing you can see I've done as well now is actually I've stepped down a subdivision level because mm. it's just there was too much working on that subdivision level up there. Um, there's just too much detail, uh, making it hard to really get the proper thing in there. Already now, just by adding this up here, yeah. like um, we have some Hulk references and some angry references of people <laughs> like the Hulk reference in in particular is very extreme yeah. um, but uh, you just search for Hulk scream <laughs> yeah, that's something that the guys at ILM who did that they spent probably months yeah a bunch of time on the face shapes for that and they, they would just look at themselves and scream a lot from the videos of it as well. And this is where you can sort of in that here you could sort of you could emphasize that uh, mm. the the gums a little more. For example, if you wanted it more animalistic feel to it, that's what can we're you like show that just pull it up and down like the lip a little, just to like show like show yeah, something so more something more natural. So if you do something like this, right? Yeah, and that's like, more humanoid. He's a little more angry, yeah. but then you do this, it's more of a snarl. Yeah. So like what you would have with a with a dog or something. So that could. Yeah. That could really help. Yeah, when you're doing this, these kind of things as well, I, I, I'm basing it off humans, but I'm also like infusing something else into it. Like yeah. if I were to do this, I would look uh, for, for this character. I would definitely look at like gorilla references. Yeah. Because he's very, he's very, he's this guy is essentially a gorilla in terms of proportions. So find some real world reference. I know we keep parroting this, and we sound like a broken <laughs> clock here, but w whatever it is you're doing, like this real world reference, and then find a bunch of different animals. You might actually, like, um, I don't know how easy it is to, probably easy to find a gorilla 
being like angry and snarling. Yeah, and you, when I think about it, you probably have like they show their teeth a lot. Mm, they do um, with a lot with a, a lot of gums. And chimps stuff. as well. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Chimps. Yeah. Like if a chimp sh a chimp shows to his teeth, uh, it's time to back off. <laughs> Fuck off. Uh, and also when it comes to this as well, don't, you, don't just go for first result on Google. Like no. there are a bunch of other resources. Like actually YouTube is fantastic for that. Really look at, at documentaries. Maybe look at documentaries on Netflix for animals. Yeah. Because if, if you start, if, if you look at from the first result of Google, that's what everyone is doing. And then your work is going to look like everyone else's work. I remember we had a teacher exactly saying, exactly, I think it was Peter Chan. Mm. And we were talking Can't about that man. I mean, he's so old school. He was talking about libraries, right? <laughs> so he was like, oh, you know, when you go look for reference at the library, Peter, no one goes looking for reference at the library. Sorry, like, Peter. Exactly. That's where you should go to look for reference. Uh, because if you just go to Google, you'll find the same. He was talking about foxes in this mm. example. If you just go to Google and you, look, you search for foxes, you'll find the same fox that everyone else has. Mm. Whereas if you go to the library and you pick out random animal books about foxes and you find reference there, you'll have found fox reference that I can guarantee you that no one else yeah. finds. And I think it was an interesting point. Obviously, sometimes it could be a bit extreme. You don't always want that, but- I still haven't gone to the library. Since yeah, then. yeah, me neither. But <laughs> it's like, the I, I get his point, yeah. you know? So if you want to find something more unique, then try to just think outside the box and not just search for like, okay, I want to find a fox, fox yeah. first reference, done. There might be cooler foxes or yeah. foxes that do other stuff. Or at least it, with with foxes though, to be fair that, but at least you would be looking at real world reference. Yeah. That. It's more, yeah, but then if you're doing like an orc and you're searching for orc, you're going to find uh, Warhammer, uh, World of Rings, or you're going to be finding World of Warcraft. Yeah. And, and then you're getting like really, really generic things. Like if you were to make an orc out of, you, you look at a gorilla and a chimp and a human, maybe a bit of like a dog, and were to mix that into something, yeah. at least you would get something more original, something more, something which feels more credible. But if yeah. you just search for orc and you're just recreating a Warcraft orc, I mean, then you're, you're not even close to like primary sources. You're no. so <laughs> far away from doing anything original. Like it's, it's like triple distilled artwork. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So here, what I wanted to do here was just uh, emphasize the strength of his jaw a little mm. more again. So bring out the um, the chin a little more, get a little focus to it. And then one thing I really like to focus on is the is the shape of the the jaw. So going from mm. the jaw out to the chin. So it's not just before; it was very much just like this this shape here was actually like a round shape, whereas now we get this angular shape. Mm. And we see there's there's some more uh, strength to the to the chin and you can see how it goes out and then it goes in here so it's like a it's like we get like this little curve so mm -hmm. it's not it's not just like curve. yeah exactly so it's not just this round thing and I, that's really that's something that everything in the body does like getting those shapes in can really help we should maybe do a video on that on what curves like s curves and c curves and all that it's, not a it's like if you, if you have s curves and c curves and you just flip and flop them around like you, you just have instant gesture yeah. and life into your model. So I'm working worse though, where are the mouth scars? <laughs> so because I'm sculpting today, uh, there will be no scars. God damn it. Even though this is the typical s scar person. Like, you know, this, this, it's all arcs, orcs would always have scars. Yeah. Um, this section here, so here's an interesting note. Um, when you sort of, f actually this is very chimp-like now. Mm. Um, yeah. Once you're, when you're opening your mouth like at this extreme, sort of to, the, to these kinds of extremes, this part of your, of your mouth, I don't know if there's a specific term for it, tends to get very, very thin. Mm. Because you're yeah. really stretching the, it's like the, um, like that. That's why, like, it's like two points kind of meet. Mm. Um, so a lot of pressure gets put on that area there. So you can I think, think that's so important when we're talking about now, like stretched skin. Yeah. Like I, I know we we always keep talking about that, but like if if you can like really sculpt the skin to look stretched. I mean, this yeah. is true if you're drawing or whatnot. You, skin stretches like crazy. One thing I'm also noticing in this model as well now is the ears are too far on the front because yeah. they will go they will go behind the, the jawbone. Yeah, let's actually do that. That's a good point. Oh, it, it, that's one of these things. Like it looks a bit weird, but not really sure why it looks a bit weird. 
all we can do is we can just shift our jawbone. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because so. yeah, the ear will always go behind the jawbone. If you look at a skull, you can see like the whole, the ear hole. <laughs> Probably has more anatomical term than that. So I'm just gonna get rid of some of the anatomy here and yeah. make up some new anatomy. <laughs> this is also the way I'm doing it as well. If, if I need to fix something, I'm not going in and noodling. It's yeah. just like the brush of death. <laughs> and here, let's see if we can, this is going to be an interesting one with the stenoplatomastoid. So it's not something I want to focus too much on because he's sort of like pushing his face forward. So it's, but it's just getting yeah. an indication of something in the there. The sternocleidomastoid is awesome. It's one of these like really hero muscles. Yeah. If you don't have it, it looks weird. And this guy here, he didn't really have that problem. Um, it has a bit of a cr crazy name, sternocleidomastoid. But essentially you can just think of it as a straight line which goes from uh, the sternum, uh, just between the clavicles, and uh, behind the ear. A simplified version, a straight line from behind the ear to, down to the sternum. So when it does, like, depending on how you activate it, it can deform a little bit as well. Yeah. Um, and if you twist your head, it's going to be more active on one side than the other. Yeah. Like if you, if you actually, if you twist it, it's going to be like almost rock hard. And then the other one is just going to be super chill. It's actually, it's actually one of my favorite muscles. Mm. I love it. Like, especially... And it's not to sound creepy, but <laughs> <laughs> I think we've talked about this before as well. But like on on, I, I find it very prominent on skinny women, mm. um, especially, and they turn their heads like so. It's like the opposite side of activation. They, like you really see. So if you find like if you search for I don't know model or something, skinny mm. model turning head, whatever. <laughs> maybe I don't know. Google phone point here. <laughs> <laughs> um, then you'll find like really clear indications of the yeah. sternocleidomastoid, and what you will have is you'll have this very, very fine sort of line just yeah. down here where it starts to activate. Yeah. You wouldn't get that in a straight pose like no. this because um, no. there's no, like what it does, like it turns your head. Yeah. So you don't see that kind of activation. So important that to just to think that every single muscle, every single shape you do on, the, on anything you sculpt has a function. You would never just go, ah, oh, this is just kind of a blob or whatever. No. <laughs> Every single thing you're doing here has its purpose. And if you don't understand the purpose, that's fine. See if you can understand the purpose of it. Like what Morton is doing now, which is screaming and uh, touching uh, his face. Yeah, it's like I'm trying, to, I'm trying to sort of like uh, merge the two, you know, without going in and changing the design too much, going too far away from what Mr. Uh, Enrique Dusk90 has done. <laughs> Um, but I, I do have to. So now we're ignoring those teeth a little bit. Yeah. Let's pretend he didn't have tusks. I think what, what Morton was talking about before is also so important when it comes to, like both Morton and I used to do this like for, 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 for the movies and it wasn't that you just know everything. I mean, as a character modeler, you're not, it's not that somebody tells you, hey, can you do an orc with a scream? And you go, yes, sir, of course, I'll just get that out of right away. Get that in my mind repertoire. <laughs> yeah, done. exactly. It's more that if I was asked, tasked to do this, I would spend like an hour looking for reference. I mean, for if it was for a full movie, then I would spend like probably like uh, probably like a full day just searching for reference. Yeah. If it was for a speed sculpt or something like that, probably around 10, 15 minutes for that, but just get reference. Because if, if you don't have that, you don't know where to start. And and then you start approaching it. If you just start going YOLO and start sculpting right away, it's just not going to work. You need to have this upfront cost where you really look at it. Because like we are saying, like we don't really know all this kind of stuff here. Okay. We have a general methodology on how to sculpt, which is first the skeleton, then muscle, then fat, then skin. And then you just look for reference for the, for the unique and the, the main differences. Yeah. So we're neglecting this area a little bit mm. and you would have this, this is where we were just talking about this before the video with the, you have the psychomatic up here and you kind of get this like this empty, bone. empty triangle space in mm. here where yes, there are muscles, but the difference between muscle and bone sort of our bone just takes priority, gets pushed out more. And then the fat and the skin tends to disappear a little in there. The, the way I was actually learning this was I was just doing like facial expressions and just straight up poking my face. Like if you poke your 
if we had video of us, that would look really weird right now. But it's like <laughs> if you poke your your cheekbone or your, your, your if you poke your chin, your psychomatic, your chin bone here, you are. Um, you would you would feel like it's really it's really bony it's really hard you can't really move it but then you put your finger a bit up and you feel um, on the temples you feel um, you have muscle there not so much bone and then you bit down and you you have just this empty area Morton was just doing right now yeah and it's just like it's that um, we talk so much about it that whole uh, working from the inside out figuring mm -hmm. out like what, why why the bone why is the bone there what does it what does it do and then you sort of add stuff on top. Whenever I've had students who, I mean, we, we've both been teaching this kind of stuff. And whenever we've, I've had students who's been in trouble with this and they're like, oh, there's something wrong here. What's, what's broken? I'm like, I, I actually don't know. Let's figure <laughs> out. And what I'm doing is I'm just brutally going over with like the clay buildup brush and just taking away everything they've done, yeah. <laughs> getting in the bones. And most of the time, it's just the, the error is usually 100% because the skeleton has has didn't have, get the love it deserved. They just skipped the skeleton face. Like in nine out of ten cases, that is that is the reason. It, it didn't work. So the depression here underneath the neck in between the sternocleidomastoid can also be quite severe mm. sometimes. So also just help it sort of like Yeah. That looks a lot better already. Make it sort of come out of the out of the body, so to speak. Now on to one of my other favorite muscles, mm. the platysma. That's a good muscle. So this is the classic scream muscle. Mm. This is what the platysma does is that it pulls this part of your face down. Um, so whenever you're screaming, like you look yourself in the mirror and you try to like open your mouth and pull it down. It, you can't talk at the same no. time. You get like platysma activation. Um, and it like, so just, you know, it would look like, like that. So it goes down like it's this. such a crazy muscle because it's like it's a surface muscle yeah, so it's so thin like it's crazy thin mm -hmm. so and it, after you've been doing this as well as well you you it gets really tired yeah and and you just it's almost like you have like almost you're going to the gym and it burns afterwards but it burns in this like nondescript area on your neck <laughs> it's yeah. really weird let's see and because it's a surface muscle and it's so thin, it's like it's actually kind of hard to incorporate with mm, that is. the other stuff that you're doing because you don't want to. So you don't want to destroy whatever's no. there. This is um, actually one of the few times I'm sculpting with a standard brush, just because uh, yeah. because it's it it's such a fine thing. So it's it's a it's a fine thing when it comes to it's, it's a sharp thing, but it's not a subtle thing. No, like it's it can be very prominent, but it's one of these muscles you wouldn't really know about. Crazy, crazy platysma. Yeah, if you look at the hawk, for example, he's mm. a good example of uh, platysma activation. Yeah. So but I also think it's important when talking about that that the Hulk is also that is, that is a, already a creative character where they yeah. have looked at reference. Whenever I'm doing this kind of stuff, I think it's important to look at the reference they looked at. Yes. Look at some people. Look at yourself. Yeah. As, I mean, I'm I'm primarily using the mirror here. Yeah. To, there. I like looking at I like stuff like the Hulk here in the way that then I'm like okay how did they solve this problem because yeah. it's a creative problem essentially how does the Hulk what does a Hulk look like when he's screaming is very similar it's a very similar problem to what does this guy here look like so it, it's interesting seeing how they solve that issue get some stuff down it's also interesting what Morgan was talking about before like the the depression and the hole right like uh, in in his neck when he was doing like we had a mm -hmm. video about contrast and I just can't stress how important it is to have the contrast in there like you don't want everything on the surface to be equal you want areas which are like which really go in and like depress into the surface yeah yeah I mean it just like that there just helps to create mm. a space that's not just flat anymore where get nice shadows and everything yeah. One thing that's tricky about the platysma is that it actually so it tends to straighten out your area, the area of your neck a little bit because mm. it does move the skin and because it's so close to the to the surface, it actually deforms quite a lot. Mm. Let's see. Yeah, it's one of these if you if you were to look at some of the references we have, which is like of um, stock man screaming, <laughs> and and you didn't know what was going on there, it would look it, it's it's just absurd. It's almost like a tree trunk or something yeah. like that. 
like water which has fro been frozen solid mid-wave or something. <laughs> so yeah. I think it's important to know the anatomy underneath here. Yes. Like know about the platysma, know about the various muscles. We, we had somebody who, uh, who responded to one of our videos. We're talking about like uh, saying that, uh, what was it? Anatomy isn't important. And it's like, okay. so we, we've been talking about how knowing the anatomical names isn't necessarily important. If you know uh, that it's called platysma or not, that might not be super important. Yeah. It's good to know. But what's important is to know that it exists. To yeah. look at a reference of somebody screaming, of Mr. Attractive Mid-20s Man from the stock image site <laughs> screaming, that is important. But to know specific names is not necessarily that important. No. So we're all for learning anatomy here. <laughs> I think that's super important. It's just that knowing the specific names might not be... I still advise doing that. You can, you can always learn the, the names. Yes. Like that's, the, that's the thing. Like yeah. it's, uh, it's always... It's never too late to, no. to learn the names. But no, you should definitely know anatomy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you have to. Otherwise, like you, everything you're doing now is based on anatomy. We haven't really talked too much about technical terms here, but uh, like specific muscle names that we have mentioned some. But it's all about knowing the forms. Yeah, I really can't stress that enough. Yeah, because kind of like if if you're if you're a doctor, you probably know a bunch of anatomical names, uh, or if you're a personal trainer, you probably know way more anatomical names than what we do. Yeah, you can't sculpt. Yeah, <laughs> we're probably way better at sculpting than a personal trainer. I mean, I would hope so. Yeah, I would hope so. Otherwise, otherwise we should just give up now. <laughs> yeah. Mm, getting more contrast in there as well. Mm. Just trying to. Like it's, it's that constant battle of uh, you want to preserve a design and yeah. you also want to get some realism into it. Yeah. But at the same time, it is also a little more stylized. So yeah. Yeah. You also yeah. You, like I said, you got to respect that as well. Yeah. You got to respect that somebody has that Mr. Enrique Dasknanti has has designed this. <laughs> but already there, like this might be a little bit exaggerated, but yeah. it's it just adds some contrast in the here between the chin and stuff. Yeah. You can add a little chin dimple <laughs> if you want. A little chin scar. Oh, okay, now it's gone again. <laughs> I'm also confused about the word chin because in Norwegian, chin is uh, is is like kind of like the side of your face. Oh. Okay. So uh, I, I I was confused chin and cheek. Uh. But I actually made a mistake <laughs> earlier. I said I said a chin bone when I should have said a cheekbone. <laughs> Just because like phonetically they're the same word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The chin bone. I don't really get confused between English and Norwegian anymore, but man, the chin bone. <laughs> yeah, just defining the ear a bit as well. Like the ear is a tricky one to do. And here it just kind of looks like a general protrusion of the head, but the ear always has the same uh, has the same shape. I mean, if you're doing if you're doing a gorilla or an orc or a human or whatnot, it's pretty much the same shape. There was some variation in proportion, yeah. but um, it's mostly the same shape. So I'm just gonna quickly just get something here. This is not necessarily indicative of a ear here, but just to define a little more. Yeah, it's like it's indicative, but nothing more. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. And this is also scope we could have spent like hours more, like really going in with in all the areas. We could have spent an hour talking about the eyes and the ears and all that. Yeah. That would actually be a cool video as well, sculpting ears. Yeah. Because that is a tricky one to get right. The way I learned to sculpt ears was just to sculpt a lot of ears. Sculpt them all the time. There is not a whole lot of like, oh, the logic behind it, pull and push and pull these shapes, or it's just, it's just a shape. Memorize these shapes. Essentially, just do a lot of ears. Yeah. One thing that's really cool as well, I remember, so like when you're squinting, this part in here is so obviously right now I'm exaggerating the shapes to sort of get this in yeah. here, but you can see that you have this big buildup of volume. Mm. One thing that... um. Uh, this is Soup Marcus on the last film I worked on. He talked a lot. He's like a face shape guy. So uh, good at face shapes. Yeah, really. And he talked a lot about like you always have to keep in mind, you know, where when you compress a volume, so like when you're squinting your eyes, that volume doesn't disappear. Mm. You know, it has to go somewhere. <laughs> so and, and where does it go? So there's there's always going to be a build up uh, somewhere else, like because you're displacing a volume. It's like you know putting up. Mm. 
it's a break in water or something. Um, so the, the water has to go somewhere. It's the same thing with, uh, with like when you're squinting your eyes like this, you know, you have to compress it mm. and that compression starts to build up volume somewhere else, you know, like here. And then you can get depressions other where, other, other, other places. So it's just, it's trying to think logically about where, where would the new volume sort of appear. It's also really cool when it comes to face shapes. Like if you're if you're really good at doing face shapes, that that's a job. Yeah, that's but this is something job. I know a lot bunch of people don't actually know. But when you're doing these kind of things, like if you are looking at at the Hulk, um, you and and you have face shapes. That's not just a rigor, which is like ah, we're just gonna move the shape up here, like <laughs> no. or an animator pushing it. There needs to be very specific and bespoke face shapes made for this. And and that's a that's a really cool job. You're sitting and just doing faces all day long it's highly specialized and the people who are good at it are, are god they're amazing they're so good at that you know we're like we're like noobs yeah. when it comes to that yeah so. i've actually never done face shapes professionally uh i, I know there are people who I've, I've done some blend shapes for stuff but not specific face shapes yeah because the people who do that they, they are they're so good they usually they usually come from sculpting because mm. you need just an excellent knowledge of anatomy and particularly you know obviously the face <laughs> Uh, we know a guy who came from like Florence, from one of the, the academies, academy there. It was just such a beast when it came comes to sculpting. He was just put onto face shapes because like it's not it's not necessarily knowledge of three D, though of course that is also important. Uh, you have some technical blend shapes hacks and all that, but just mm. knowing how the face compresses and reacts. Yeah, it's that traditional experience is shouldn't underestimate it. No, it's a lot easier, I think. Um, to go from being a traditional artist to a digital one than from the digital one because like you get so used to the tools and like if you're if you've done traditional stuff um, you've just been I mean not that digital artists don't grind um, but you learn to see in a different way look at things in a different way from just from a traditional point of view yeah also because there isn't really the Florence Academy of Seabrush it's not that where you have you, somebody brings you bring your bring your satique and it's just sculpture for 12 hours a day no <laughs> exactly I, I personally really dislike working with traditional particularly like doing like uh, small maquettes because I'm like this bloody thing cuts my fingers and uh, yeah. I can get the same result. Like what takes me like three hours to do setting up the maquette and all the wiring, I could do literally in four minutes in ZBrush. Yeah. But it's also a really re rewarding experience as well. It's a very different one. But in terms of pure output, I can be, I'm, I'm just so much faster. But then you also have people like Simon Lee and Spider Zero, who's just an absolute beast when it comes to traditional. Yeah. I love sculpture. He's, he's, he's started getting into Seabrush now. Oh, that's he scary. keeps posting his stuff on Instagram and on Twitter. And it's like, oh, those people shouldn't have access to Seabrush. It's just <laughs> way too much power. He's going to make everyone else look bad. <laughs> so it, it's interesting looking at this. I hadn't really thought about it before um, with the platysma. But the variation is pretty big mm. in the platysma. Um, so I was doing exactly these kind of face shapes for uh, a film I was working on previously and it was very very interesting because uh, you just you you have to look at a lot of people's platysmas <laughs> and usually <laughs> like you. usually you have access to your own like me for example I only have like sort of like two hmm. sort of like Define, defining strands that go up here but some people like the our reference it's just like it's covered in platysma everywhere so you know find whatever works for your project and then do that looking at hulk here now he actually has like three which are just equal yeah i would have actually broken that a bit up i think another thing we can just do is just emphasize gap in mm. here just a little bit more again just creating contrast to sort yeah. of make the jaw stand out a little bit also like what morton was alluding to here before like uh, it, variation individual variation we, we also talk about this because there is so much individual variation in people yeah. and particularly if you're doing like an orc or something like that there is no such thing as generic anatomy generic anatomy is a starting point where you have some general rules like yeah. this is the origin and insertion of the muscle uh, but that is a starting point. That's not where you end up. If you do that, you, if you, if you if you you only use generic anatomy, you're gonna get generic characters and designs. I love that term, generic anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
What I like about this model here is kind of like the flow around him. Like uh, he has like a there's like a nice gesture from mm. the side. And it's starting to get there. So one thing that, uh, again you you have this again with the build up is if you look at this this is something I missed before. Mm. Like there is actually there's no build up here now in the volume. So yeah. it's not just about carving in with the damn standard. This is actually one of the few cases where it's just straight up going to use the damn standard. Mm. But you probably have this build up of parts of it gets pushed out a little bit yeah. just to give a little more sort of surface variation to it. And with a sculpt like this, I mean I would also just I would just exaggerate it because yeah. as a troll slash hulk yeah. slash ogre. So slash why not? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've never really, I never really looked at my own stuff and be like, man, I pushed this too far. No, it's always like you you push it in the you push it in the beginning, and then you start adding volumes to stuff, and you start refining it, and you just lost everything which was interesting about this original <laughs> sculpt here. Happens every time. Yeah, you can see what Morton is doing now as well. Be like, don't be afraid of carving stuff in here, like just defining the back of the head a little bit here, because it's, it's hard to. On in original sculpt, it's kind of hard to see where the neck ends and and oh, then the head ends and the neck begins. Yeah, so I would actually like just evaluate, re-evaluating this thing now. I'd probably just go in. Yeah, like Henning said, it's like it was one big lump. Yeah. So just trying to find a natural break point in it, just so we can have some contrast again in there. Yeah. Yeah, again, destroying all the form with the claim below. <laughs> it's just, I mean, you just gotta do it. And in terms of like brushes, with the, the, the question, what brushes do you use? It comes up all the time and it's, <laughs> yeah, it, it's been the same when we are painting a Photoshop as well. Oh, what brush do you use? Is there a custom one? No, it, it's the round standard one with, <laughs> and with a tablet. I think it's, it's like, it's the whole, um, when you see people doing something and you want to do the same thing, you think, there's always like a magical solution oh, to it, secret. right? Yeah, yeah. There's always a secret to to, to doing it, but yeah. I don't know. Simplicity I found works the best for me, at yeah. least. Um, yeah, for sure. We also had oh, has a question, so the discussions in the comments about should you use a tablet or not? Can you do this with a tablet? And it's like, oh fuck yeah, <laughs> technically. <laughs> You can, but but in reality, you need you need a tablet. I mean, yeah. you can't uh, just sit with a mouse. It's and... first off, you're missing the pen pressure, which is which is insanely useful. But also yeah. from a health point of view, you'll probably get like like what is it called tunnel carpal carpal tunnel yeah, Carp yeah carpal tunnel syndrome, and you your arms are just going to be screwed up like crazy. I had that. I had that in both my arms, and it was miserable. I had it at the same time, Oof. and it was because I was sculpting too much. Yeah. Now imagine if I was doing that with a mouse, and you're just clicking all the time. Uh, when I'm working in Maya, I'm actually going between a tablet and a mouse just because yeah, um, it's me. good for my hands and wrists. But uh, I highly recommend getting a tablet. And and for the tablets as well, just some recommendations. Uh, they used to be called the Bamboo. I think they're just called Intuos now. But the cheapest Intuos is like $60, oh. 60 pounds, whatever okay. it is. Yeah. It, they're, I've been actually been, I've been sculpting a fair bit on them when I've been teaching, and they're perfectly fine. They're simple. They're not doing any of the crazy bullshit like, oh, touch enabled. You don't want that. I actually wish I could just... I, I want like just a... Can you get a bamboo that's the same size as a normal Intuos? Or are, oh, are they smaller? I think they are smaller. Because I, I want a bamboo that's the size of my mm. medium Intuos tablet. Because yeah. I think I don't need a, the touch stuff. No, I, I bought it by accident with touch. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, damn it. I, I don't want any fancy settings. I don't want any buttons. I just want... Uh, I just want a pen and a surface I can sculpt on and paint on. Yeah. The very first thing I always do whenever I get a new tablet or a new PC, disable everything. Okay. Let's see. So I think this is probably the majority yeah. of, of the things we want to address here. So let's just um, see where we came from. This one. Take back the undo thing. Oh, we gotta got be careful now. There's a bug in ZBrush. If you change the sub tool now, it's gonna delete all the undo history. I had that last week. <laughs> it's gonna delete all the undo yeah. history. So let's yeah. just duplicate this. Yeah. Well, I guess technically now I. Oh, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> okay. It's all there. 
<laughs> I did. I didn't have a backup. Already. Yeah, I had that last week, and I was showing to somebody, and I was like, "Oh man!" <laughs> <laughs> it just deleted all of it. <laughs> so okay, we don't have the teeth, and we don't have the eyes yeah. here, but we can still sort of. So this is the original one. Yeah. It's like a new one. So it's just like you can see how it's like we've created this point of tension here. Yeah. Um, and what that point of tension has done is I can't actually. I'm pointing at the screen because I'm. <laughs> so see how there's a buildup of muscle and skin and everything now, whereas before it's sort of like he looks a little limp. Mm. Um, it's just so it's just trying to emphasize some of these areas, creating tension, mm. um, and like adding some volume here. Let's see, building up some more volume here on the nose, building up volume on the on the brows, and then just a little bit of posture to not have him hunched over so much. You know, it might not be what uh, Enrique Dusk90 is looking for <laughs> in his design, but these are still all applicable yeah. for whatever you're doing um, when you're doing facial expressions. So it's really about get the bony stuff in here. Yeah. And we were talking about this before recording, like we're not going to show it, but if you were to take this further, yeah. one thing I would do fairly immediately would be break the symmetry. Yeah. Like if, if you're doing a production model, I wouldn't do that because then, then you're in a world of pain. But if you're doing for a concept sculpt, I would break I would break symmetry quite quickly. The nice thing about so when I was doing face shape, so at at the point of when you're doing face shapes, you already have your finished model, yes. right? And at that point, the face shapes that you're doing, especially so if it's face shapes that um you know you would have like from side to side there, open the jaw, that could all be symmetrical. Mm. Um having something like this where you have like a maybe you have a brow raise or you have a squint, in that shape you add asymmetry yeah. in the actual shape because yeah. that's how that's how you do asymmetry. There yeah. might be some sculptural asymmetry in there as well, but the asymmetry yeah. really comes from or asymmetry really comes from from the from the shapes. Yeah, yeah, it does. I I just enjoy just breaking it up. Yeah, it's, like it's this because really it just looks so much better right away. Like you just move one corner of the eye of the mouth up a little bit, move one eye down, yeah. make screw up the shape of the ear a little bit, and you <laughs> just have like an instant character right away. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, this is this is pretty much it. We really hope that you've been enjoying this video here. And uh, if you want to see more content like this in the future, make sure to leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks, guys.